I want to make unlimited income. I want to have freedom of my time. I want to work with people and I don't want to be chained to an office. And it said finance stockbroker. I was like, I don't know what it is, but sign me up, please. Wow. And then that's what I did. Okay. <laughs> let's sit on the couch. Let's talk it out. Oh. Come on, join the show. I'll tell you what I know. Oh, talk about it. It's the best podcast. Let's have a blast. Well, y'all, given much research, African Americans tend to exhibit lower financial well being other than, you know, the white population in America, and given the strong link between financial literacy and financial well being, increased financial knowledge can lead to an improved financial capability and behaviors. We need to know what's going on in our pockets, okay? So, my question to you is what's going on in your pockets? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I am joined with this conversation, uh, Saria Rigo, financial expert, creator of the Black Wealth Matters series. Yep, an educational series. An educational, educational series. series. It's uh -huh. Needed. Okay, join uh -huh. in on that. Uh, Saria and I actually work very close together. Okay, so, you're, so like in this conversation, gauge what we're talking about because she has helped set my life up for a better situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to get straight into it because Go money ahead. matters. It does. Why is it so important? We're black out here and nobody is teaching us the education. Well, that's by design. And you got to remember, I think what I've discovered from creating the Black Wealth Matters educational series is that systemic racism really mm. functions through poverty. Yeah. Its function is to make us poor. And if you even go back into history, if you think about all the atrocities that happened to us that looked violent, mm. they were violent and financial like Tulsa. Not only were they financially successful, but the people who were killed during the Tulsa riots, they never had their insurance paid. Oh. Yeah. So those oh. people not yeah, their life insurance was never nobody everybody pretend like it didn't exist. Wow. Uh, I read That's in dirty it's, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. And then I read in um, Barack Obama's book, The Audacity of Hope, that like 90 percent, 85 percent of the lynchings were black business owners. Wow. Business owners. Wow. So if you think about history and the violence that we had to deal with as black folks, a lot of it was violence because of our pocketbooks. Yeah. OK. OK. And so wait, I have to ask you, because this is a very this is um tied to so much right why mm -hmm. did you want to get into this field thank you for asking i did not i didn't know anything <laughs> <laughs> like like most people with money you just don't know nothing about it i'm from uh, a single mama on the south side of chicago yeah and buh, 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 buh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even that, my grandma was from Mississippi and, mm. and there were so many things. It, it, it all just, it just, there was so much ignorance that I had yeah. about just being black. Like my grandma couldn't read and I didn't understand why my grandma couldn't read. Really? And she, what I didn't know was back in Mississippi, even though slavery was over, uh, Mississippians were not following the law. So often we have laws, yeah. but nobody's following them, especially when it comes to us. Yeah. But in our judicial system, they make time to follow the letter of the law for our black bus. But so my grandma couldn't read. She was still pretty much a slave as a kid. They didn't let her go to school. So she escaped like wow. a lot of black folks did and migrated to Chicago. And so now my mom's here and her 13 brothers and sisters and they're working and they're working hard. They're like factory workers worked at bakeries and mm -hmm. i mean get there an hour mm -hmm. early oh, yeah. leave late they were like the good midwest you know yeah hard workers. workers very hard promoting workers. it that's it go to work <laughs> and so i thought you know you work hard except i also saw that we were always broke like everybody and that don't make no broke. sense and i was like this doesn't yeah. this math is not math <laughs> And I didn't want no parts of it, except my little brain didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I was an artist and I was great. I was a painter and a sculptor. I was good. Uh -huh. I was like looking at the University of Chicago, but I didn't know nothing about art either. And somebody uh -huh. was like, well, you know, we're starving artists. I was like, where is my purse? Okay. It is time I wanna to go. I want to be a fed artist. I don't want to starve okay. anymore. I'm always starving. So fast forward, um, go to school. I became a pre-med major because during a time... Doctors and lawyers were the only career that I knew about yeah. from the Cosby show. That's all I knew. Couldn't afford that. Never started school with books. Did a program that did, it was like a match.com, but for careers. And I was like, I want to make unlimited income. I want to have freedom of my time. I want to work with people and I don't want to be chained to an office. And it said finance stockbroker. 
I was like, I don't know what it is, but sign me up, please. Wow. And then that's what I did. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah. I have to ask you because there's a lot of, you know, uh, listeners here. We, we pride ourselves on the millennial conversation. It's self-help meets street talk. Okay. That's what the podcast is, right? So why is uh -huh. it so important for us black millennials to build credit and what's the proper way to do so? You know, credit is so interesting. Credit is another whammy jammy of our system. It really is. So credit seems like it's been around forever, don't it? Yes. Mm -mm. Since like 1985. Oh. 85 is when, uh, when, um, what is it? Uh, the fret. Um, I don't know, but my mama was born. Yeah, that <laughs> that score. What's the what's the credit score for FICA? No, not FICA. Oh, FICA. No. Fisco. It's Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> it's the credit. The whatever okay. those guys' name the is. No, the credit score, when the credit that we measure our credit score, like 687 something, that's a credit score. And that, that thing uh -huh, came out scale. in 1985. Yeah. That, sca that scale only came out in 1985. Before that, mm -hmm. uh, credit was them going to the general store asking, uh, does Archie pay his bills? Do, uh, when, when Archie has a tab, does he pay his tab on time? And before that I credit do. was, <laughs> and before <laughs> that credit was even from slaves, yeah. you know, credit was created through banks for slave owners so that they can mm. maximize their, uh, slave Interesting. capital. Right. So it's all just very interesting, but it, it, it has found a way to oppress us. Hasn't it? Yes, it has. In this short time, it's found a way to be a thorn in our me side. Out too. A freaking thorn in our freaking yeah. side. Uh -huh. So uh, it's important to have credit uh, because it's just another tool used by the man to yeah. oppress us. So the way to watch your credit is just making sure you um, I'll give you guys some tips real quick because I had to get them myself from uh, a credit expert because it's, it's something yeah, that stops it people. Uh -huh. First thing is uh, don't pay off your credit cards immediately. Take three months. If you're a person that pays them off, pay them off in the third month. So balance, balance, paid off. Balance, balance, paid oh. off. Balance, balance, paid off. Oh my God, you Never. just released so much stress. <laughs> <laughs> is that New York trip? I say what? Okay. <laughs> and then the other thing is try not to exceed a third of your uh, credit limit. Okay. You know, try not to go over a yeah. third. Yeah. Uh, keep your credit cards open. Have no less than three, no more than five. Yeah. And, uh, and try to keep them for a long time. So if you have three cards, keep them for a long time. Keep them in use. It's not about being debt free. It's about looking like a good customer for them. Got it. That's, I think that's it. <sighs> this is, this is, this is, this is a, this is a big one. How do we separate our emotions from our money? Because it, it, it gets us on here, you know, whoever you are, whether you went to med school, whether you didn't go to school, whether you're in the streets, whether you're creative, mm -hmm. we're on a roller coaster. Yeah, money, money, you got to watch it because you can't let your highs get too high. You can't let your lows get too low either way uh, because it's actually dangerous. Yeah. It, it That's stress. Yeah. Stress will kill you. I'm not joking. I actually think money stress is the reason why we have shorter lifespans in the black community. Um, the best way to separate it is to really... Uh, be realistic right mm. so if you're if you're down to your last three hundred dollars yeah. right and you get paid and you know shortly don't stress it's easy to stress especially if you're a person let's say you uh lost something or you had an emergency and you're used to seeing a bunch of money in your bank account and then it's small but you get paid like, don't stress, but it's so easy to get attached to it. It's easy it to get is. attached to that. It's easy to get attached to debt. Yeah. It's very easy to get attached to those areas. And I also think it, it comes from not focusing on the big picture. Like, what are you working towards? Yeah, What's the yeah, goal? Yeah. Sometimes when you when you don't have anywhere to go, everything looks like a wall. Uh -huh. If you have somewhere to go, it's just a step. It's a little step. <sighs> What, what 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 is this what is this we over me why why is it we over me you know we we talk about you know this in the black community because to me it feels like it's me over we so elaborate this a little bit more so one of the one of the great things about the, being in the black community is that um we are a we yeah. right yes. we're one of the few groups that are a we as a matter of fact people come from all over the world to come to the United States because of what we as black people made it mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who's fought for civil rights. We're the ones who fight for um, police um, justice. We're, we're fighting so that people can have a, yep. a better life. Unfortunately, we haven't quite experienced it yet, but 
we always have been that way. If it wasn't a we over me, we wouldn't have Harriet Tubman. We wouldn't have Rosa. We wouldn't yeah, have Martin Luther King. Yeah. But I feel like somehow we're at a place now where it's just me. That's what I'm saying. You know, and that, I don't see the banding together. But it ha- we have to. The banding starts with just following a common cause, right? And it doesn't have to be so consuming. It's, but you need to have some time devoted to helping black folks, whether mm-hmm. it's uh, you follow maybe an activist and they're like, OK, you guys need to call this police department because they got this person behind the bar. You need to call them yeah. like it needs to. You need to have some deference for all of us, because mm-hmm. the reality is if something goes wrong, everyone wants everyone to cape for them. Yeah. So we got to make sure that we're putting in some time for everyone else. The other thing is we over me in terms of our family. Yeah. I think that there's too much individualism in terms of our, our planning for ourselves. Uh-huh. And it makes us actually poor. Think about it like this. If you plan for yourself and your retirement and your vacations, yeah. there's always a probability that you'll fail. There's always a probability in anything that will fail. For it. Okay. Yeah, you can plan and still fail, yeah. you know. So if you fail who's who's butt out you are right yes. but if you plan for your grandkids mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you fail they might be butt out but you're fine your kids are fine the grandkids so it's like we being too myopic when failure is on a table which it always is mm-hmm. there's no there's no guarantee with anything yeah uh when you're too small and you fail you hurt you if you think bigger yeah and you fail you're still taken care of so uh-huh. i think there's kind of a it, there's almost a selfishness this, that's with what helping I was say. people with helping other people because that means you got enough to give away yeah it's a lot of present it's a lot of like all of that okay so i have to i have to say this because you know we work together we collaborate and we're trying to uh, grow me money Uh, but so when the process comes um of like seeking financial help financial advisors you know investments whatever that stuff and you are researching your people uh one what's the good tactics or tools to do so Mm mm-hmm so I'll go for that one first right. and now I'm going to ask a question. I would say FINRA. Uh-huh. Um, try to find an advisor that is licensed to sell investments because right now, uh, unfortunately, in the black community, we have a lot of financial experts that have never been licensed. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, somebody giving you a medical advice and has literally no nothing with, with doctors. Okay, just cutting. Nothing. Yeah. Or or guessing. Or guessing. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. and, and that doesn't work. Uh, and I think people prey on us because we are so newly out of slavery. Real talk, we are. You know, so we're pretty much like the newest generation that's having a little bit of freedom and we think it we think that it's like for real (laughs) and now we're learning that it's just optional because the government can take it away anytime but in terms of (laughs) (laughs) in terms of um in terms of um god dog on it i just lost my train of thought in terms of where were we talking about Archie. We can come back to it because I was just asking like what? Yeah. Research. Yeah. So yeah, people prey on the black community. Yeah. So we'll have people giving us financial advice and, and it never creates wealth. Right. You know, it right. never creates wealth. And that's a problem. So look at FINRA. Yeah. F-I-N-R-A is the, is the organization that regulates financial yeah. people. Put their name in FINRA. See their history. See if they're licensed. Start there. Don't take advice from people who are not licensed. You just can't do it. You got to be, you have some deference and some discernment. I... You know, I was not uh, set up with all the resources to invest and to prepare and to know everything about money. And so in the collaboration process, there was great apprehension when having conversations with you, talking to things and growing things and even divulging information, which I think is very just like regular for us all. And so what has been your experience with that? And like, do you feel yourself having to combat that? Because you are doing the we work, not just the me work. Yes. Uh, You know, and I think that's where being black and understanding black history comes in because Mm -hmm. I understand it. I have empathy. Mm -hmm. I have patience and I have love. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas if someone else didn't understand it, they'll get frustrated and pissed off and they'll be like, bye. So I'm like, okay, do we need one more conversation? Do we need another thing? Do you need to look this up? Let me help you. Do you want to read this book? Uh, So 
there's a lot of fear. Like I, I've had young ladies not want to give me their social security number and I'm trying to set up investment accounts for well, them. You, well, you did ask me for my social security number. I said, now what else do you want from me? Yeah. <laughs> like what else? What? I like, love it. I all of it. Money is not a joke. America <laughs> is the found. We are I mean, like we are as capitalistic as you get. Yeah. And so, uh, no, social security numbers are important when you're setting up investments. That's why you got to make sure you're dealing with a registered advisor from yeah. a company and you know what complaints they've had on them. Because weird people are out there. People that Absolutely. are just not, with, as you said, don't have the the, uh, the education and maybe associated something with um, scamish. Absolutely celebrities get scammed all the time because they don't know how to look people up they don't know where to look it's finra yeah. try finra first if they don't have all the licenses ask them why okay saraya yes how do i get out of my college loans <laughs> <laughs> uh, well you got you got uh, you know what honestly i wish they i wish i could help the government so bad uh -huh. one of the things that i would do especially that would kill two birds with one stone in the black community yeah. is i would let's say you got fifty thousand in student loans I would say with your life insurance, pay 60000 mm. Just pay 60000 Like endow 60000 to the government and then don't pay nothing else on those. Don't pay them at all. Mm. When you die, that 60000 goes to the government. Can you imagine? Everybody would have insurance. Everybody's loan to be paid off. Wow. Yeah, that sounds great. I know, right? Yeah. But the only thing, uh, I know the new program through uh, Biden, you uh -huh. get 10000 off and then 20000 yes. in a certain situation. I need to look into that. Yeah, we you do got to sign up for okay, that, okay. though. All right. Um, so I do <laughs> want to talk about home ownership. I got a call from Archie Wilson, the first, is that a senior? Uh, uh -huh. That is my dad's name. I am a second. And he said, hey, son, this is how he's talking about it. No. Uh, and so it's like, he's like, hey, I saw this uh, Bank of America thing. You need to look into it. Da, 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 you should probably buy a house. I said, do you know how much houses are on here in LA? You live in Kansas City and the houses for one bedroom is $1 million. So can we talk about home ownership because it is a struggle? I don't know too much about it. There is this Bank of America program. There is a Bank of America program. How do we fall into it as a millennial being black? I just learned about it, but it sounds like it's really for black folks, especially millennials, because you need to be making under $120,000 as a W-2 for the last two years. And I think netting... 120,000 or less as a 1099. Uh, it has to be your home that you live in, wink, wink, live in, which means okay. you, as long as you get your mail, whatever they call live in, that's what you're doing there. How you doing? Uh, what else? Um, oh, and it has to be in a black majority, black or Latino neighborhood in Los Angeles, Miami, Dallas, South Carolina, and I believe Charlotte. Okay. So those are the few places that it is. Uh, but I think it'll be, I think, honestly, yeah. it's a great opportunity for people to get their first home and start building a real estate portfolio. Yeah. And they're saying that as long as you haven't purchased a house in the last three years, yeah, you're yeah. good. So then maybe what you can do is use their program to buy a house every fourth year oh wow i don't know i mean huh. i'm a queen of like let's see what let's read the fine print yeah. and then. <laughs> i reached out to, i reached out to the guy you did what happened i haven't heard back because he's so busy we need to get on him okay. he's so busy he's yeah. all i didn't think this would be a popular program I'm like well, please get out of here that's so uh. funny so okay so is it valuable uh to prioritize passion over money that's a, such an interesting question so often so one of the things that I want to do as a as a financial professional yeah. is I want to recruit and develop more financial professionals. But the problem that I'm having is something similar to me when I got in finance. People just don't know it. And then it also feels boring, right? They, they're they like, I'm, I'm just not into it. Yeah. I'm not passionate. And I think that's such crap because, number one, we've been making money since we were 14. But I, I get very nervous when I see someone that will p prioritize passion over their financial well-being because there's no there's no guarantee one way or the other. There's yeah. no guarantee I'm going to be successful. Yeah. There's no guarantee uh, whether I'm, I'm being money motivated or passion based. Yeah. There's, no guarantee, there's no guarantee. But I also feel like we got to be money motivated. We got to like keep our we got to have intention around making money because what you focus on is what you get. Yeah. And if you're not focused on making money, you're not going to get it. So how do you feel? Because, uh, you know, a lot of people say, don't focus on, don't focus on the money. The money will come. Follow your passion. Believe, follow your dreams. I wonder if they... Because they say that they, a lot and they say it to me. 
I and I'm wonder like, if they're, <laughs> I, I wonder if they're like accounting systemic racism. Uh, I wonder <laughs> if they're accounting like where we are as black folks in terms of our generational, uh, in terms of the wealth gap. Yeah. I wonder if they're looking at our responsibility to mm. kind of lev- level up since we are the most, we're doing the best of any of our generation. Yep. So I feel like it's, I feel like we got to focus on money because uh, we're doing better, but we're still not doing as well as we could. Yeah. And we won't if we, if we get stagnant here, we can't mistake good for uh, good for great. Yeah. Right. And for me, that just means at some point, if you see that you've been passion based and you're, um, you're not able to save for your future, you're not able to feed your family, you're not able to live your life, the way you want to live your life Come on now. and you don't see an exit. Come on. Then you got, you might have to pivot. Okay. So can we play a game real quick? Yes. Okay. Cause I want to, I want to get to know you a little bit better. It's okay. basically, it's called, can you imagine? So it's okay. basically, which one is more likely for your case scenario? Okay. So here we go. Can you imagine being evicted or losing all your money won from the lottery? I could imagine being evicted. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Can you imagine losing your wallet or being locked out of the house? <laughs> Locked out of the house. <laughs> Can you imagine never u- using Instagram again or never posting a picture again? But where would you put Facebook then? Uh-huh. Um, I could imagine never posting a picture again. Yeah. Like Instagram. Okay. Can you imagine owning six houses or owning six red bottoms? Uh, six houses. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Okay, I have to ask you though. Um, mm-hmm. Before we come to a close, you have you're like so filled with knowledge in this particular uh, conversation and this topic. Tell me about your series you have going on and how people can reach out to you if they want to know more and use you to get their life on track. Yeah. Okay. So um, we created the Black Wealth Matters educational series after the murder of George Floyd. We were out protesting and stomping, and I was like. I have to have something else to add to the black world. And I realized I didn't know enough about American history. So I was like, Mm -hmm. I'm sure nobody does because we're all so separated, you know? So we created the Black Wealth Series. This is our second second year doing it. Mm -hmm. We've had speakers like... um, Congresswoman Robin Kelly, who's the head of the caucus on black women and girls. We've had state's attorney Aisha Braveboy of Prince George's County, one of the wealthiest black counties. We've had Hill Harper, a tech designer. We have a lady named Rolanda Johnson, yeah. who is was featured in Forbes magazine. So it's an ongoing series. You can go to the website and see all of the past series. It's bwmeducationalseries.com. Support because... Uh, The sad thing is that whenever you do something black, all the anti-black people flood you. And so I need all the support I can get. But ultimately, everything you can find, how to book an appointment with me, how, you know, my website, everything you need, my FINRA, everything is on that um, site. Yeah. We'll drop a link right now below. Um, What's the key to happiness? Uh, Hmm. I would say for me, my yeah. key to yeah. happiness is being able to protect others. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. Thank you for coming on. You are. A wealth of knowledge. Yeah. Cheers to you. Thank you. Cheers to being here. And Thank cheers to getting to the bag. Yes, absolutely. Cheers and for the to grandchildren. Your future millionaire. Okay. Okay. Come on. For mm-hmm. the ride. Hey, friends. Thanks so much for tapping into this episode. Make sure you subscribe, like, and follow for more right here on YouTube and wherever you stream your podcast. Oh, and visit RGJ.com and follow me on social media at RGJ Speaks. Okay? <laughs> and don't miss our weekly conversations right here on the Archie Podcast. Get into it.